I'm very mindful of your time, and I know that a lot of you probably have questions, and I, I want to get to those questions. I want to go a little bit, uh, speak briefly about my experience, tell you a couple things that are real important for me uh, to get it, the information that I want to get to you. There are two points that I want to make and then talk a little bit about the type of cases that I can help with, and then we'll get to your questions. And so experience-wise, uh, I've been doing, um, I've been practicing law for 27 years, and I help policyholders with claims against their own insurance companies. And I've done literally thousands of cases on behalf of policyholders in the state of Florida from Andrew, Charlie, Francis, Jean, Ivan, Wilma, Dennis, Matthew, Irma, and others. Huh? And Wilma, October 25th. How can I forget Wilma? <laughs> so, um, I'm very passionate about what I do, and that is helping policyholders in claims with their insurance companies. There's nothing we pay more for and have less of, a, of an understanding of than insurance. You, you pay your premium. You get this thick document, your insurance policy. And I pick juries all over the state when I'm trying these cases, and I ask, how many of you have gotten that policy? And you said, you know what? I'm a conscientious homeowner. I care about my family. I better read this thing. Raise your, yeah, nobody. You turn around, you put it in a drawer. That's what everybody does. I've represented insurance adjusters, and that's what they do. And so that's not uncommon. But then a claim occurs, and then you think, well, is it covered or not? You call the insurance company. The insurance company might say no. I can tell you this, if your insurance company says no is low or slow, that's a good case for me to take a look at. If the insurance company is doing the right thing, I'll tell you. But if they're not doing the right thing, I'll tell you that too. Either way, you, you owe it to yourself and your family to have peace of mind. And so back to the experience, thousands, literally tens of thousands of homeowners and business owners against insurance companies. Uh, I try those cases uh, on behalf of our firms. Uh, I am called in from other lawyers throughout the state to help them try those cases that they have against insurance companies because um, one of the things I'm passionate about is making sure that the insurance companies pay what they're obligated to pay. Not more, but just what they're obligated to pay the other thing I'm passionate about is making sure that uh, you're well taken care of. And there are some lawyers, and I tell you, if you're hiring a lawyer, ask them, when's the last time you tried a case in front of a jury concerning this type of issue? And if they say anything other than giving you a date and a time, you may want to question that. My last trial on a homeowner's insurance case was in Stewart four weeks ago. 30 minutes into jury deliberation, the jury sent out two questions. Can we give more money than Mr. Nation asked for? And if so, is there a cap on how much we can give? Two months before that, I was in front of a jury in Dade County on a homeowner's case, 17 minutes in verdict. I try these cases. I know what juries think about these cases, and I try them all over the state. My office is in Central Florida. It takes me about an hour and 15 minutes to get here by plane. I'm here because I'm passionate about helping you and your home and your friends and neighbors who have these types of claims. I told you there were two points that I wanted to make and if I could only make these two points to people, I've accomplished what I've come down here for. Point number one, if your insurance company denies or lowballs the claim, do not get intimidated. Even if you, it comes with a long and complicated report from an engineering firm that literally may be a hundred pages long. Literally. My clients often get these denial letters and they read it and they go, oh, well, I didn't know that was in there. And they just, I don't even know what that means. And, and then there's a report attached from some engineering firm that can be 50 to a hundred pages long. And you start flipping through that thing, and it's got a binder on it, it looks like a book. 
and you go, nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. That's the case I'm looking for. The one that you think there is nothing that can be done. I cannot tell you how many times I get that engineering report from the insurance company and their denial letter. And those end up being the centerpieces of my case to win on behalf of the policyholder. Point number one, do not get intimidated. I don't care what that letter says. I don't care what the report says. Let me look at it for free. I will look at it. If they're doing the right thing, I'll tell you. If they're not, I'll tell you that too. And you owe it to yourself to have that peace of mind. There are things in those letters, I've had insurance companies quote parts of an exclusion. They'll say, we do not pay, or you got a 28-year-old three-tab shingle roof on your house before the storm, it isn't leaking, and then they get an engineer out there and the, there's a section in here and the engineer says it's wear and tear and old age, and right there they quote the wear and tear exclusion. I've won cases like that time and again, hundreds of times. Don't get intimidated, let me look at it. They may say it's flood and I don't, you don't have flood coverage. Let me look at it. I just got paid policy limits on a case for a, on a Matthew claim where the insurance company said it's flood. I went in and proved it was wind. My engineers and I went out and we picked that house apart. And I would say from the foundation to the roof, but that would be untrue because we went 10 feet below the surface and started examining it from there up. And we knew that it wasn't flood, it was wind. So let me look at that for free. Don't let it keep you up at night going, well, there's nothing I can do. But the other thing, the second point is, in I never ask for money from you. You don't have to bring your checkbook or your credit card, leave it at home. In almost every one of my cases, if I'm successful in making a recovery for you, the insurance company has to pay my fees and costs. And if I lose, I'll work for free. That's a pretty good deal. Give it, let me look at it for free and I'll tell you if they're right or wrong. If they're wrong and we make a recovery, then in almost every case where I make a recovery, they have to pay my fees and costs. If I lose, I work for free. The only time that's a little different is sometimes they offer a lump sum settlement and it's a contingent fee then, just a percentage. Regardless, you don't owe me anything if I lose and you don't uh, need to worry about whether or not, I mean, how I'm gonna pay the cost. In, in these cases, I have a team that I hire. I have a meteorologist, a forensic meteorologist I bring in to talk about the weather. I, bring, I have a certified roofer. I've got a general contractor. We've got a general contractor, building contractor or general? Yeah, general contractor over here. I've got the team to be able to put this thing together. I've got geotechnical engineers, structural engineers, hydrodynamic engineers, whatever we need to win that case. All right, those are my two points. Don't get intimidated and don't bring your checkbook. And then the final thing is the cases that I handle. Let me go back to my first point because here's my concern. Somebody is going to get a report and they're going to say to themselves, even though they've heard me say this, they're going to say, well, I know he said that, but he can't be talking about this is just too solid. There's nothing that can be done about this. I am talking to you and I am telling you, I don't care what the report says. Don't evaluate it on your own. Let me do it. And so don't ever think, well, I know he can't be talking about me because this is just too foolproof. Let me look at it. All right, those are my two points. Now, the types of cases are, um, any type of damage to your home or building or your boathouse, your dock, um, anything from wind, from flying debris, from water. Um, that's not all I do. I do fire cases where you're, anytime your insurance company says no is low or slow is a good case. And I don't care if it's a shingle roof, a slate roof, barrel tile roof. I don't care if it's cracks in the wall, 
I don't care if it's mold in the house. I don't care if the toilet backs up. I don't care if the lift station went out and every and you're the last house on the row and then all the sewage pumps into your house. I've had them all. I don't care what it is. Anything that can damage a building, I have not had a meteorite yet, but I am waiting for it. <laughs> Anything that can damage a building, I pretty much have handled. And so that's one case where you got damage and your insurance company says no. It's a good case. Let me look at it. Second, you got a roof. It is, let's say it is a 28-year-old three-tab shingle roof. Might not be pretty, but it was keeping the water out. The, rain, the wind came in. Now, you don't even have any leaks on the interior of your, your house. But a roofer has gone up and said, the sealant strip underneath the shingle, and you do have a sealant strip underneath your shingle, has lifted up your shingles. You aren't missing one shingle. But now, it's sat back down on the other shingles, but that sealant strip has been broken and it'll never reseal. That's a good case for me to take a look at. Your insurance company says, nope, it's 28 years old. Any problems you got are wear and tear deterioration. We're not buying it. We're not paying. That's a good case for me to take a look at. Or your insurance company says, all right, we'll give you, you do have damage, but you don't need your roof replaced. We'll give you 2,500 bucks. It's less than your deductible. That's a good case for me to take a look at. You, there's a rule in Florida, they got to match, you can't just fix shingles, you got you to match them. And so you can't spot ch repair them, you have to match them by statute. It's not in your policy, they'll never tell you about it, but it is in the statute. There's a 25% rule that says if 25% of a section of a roof has to be repaired or replaced, they got to do the whole thing. They're not going to tell you that. So. If they say, and a roofer says, need to replace it, and your insurance company says, no, we'll give you 2,500 bucks, let me look at it. I've tried those cases many, many times. If they say um, interior damage is covered, but the roof's not, good case, let me take a look at it. You say the, the roof's 15,000 to replace, they say it's 12,000, let me take a look at it. Because if they say no, if they're low or slow, that's a good case for me. And the final one is, and I know this is happening a lot, people have submitted the claim, either an adjuster has not come out or the adjuster has come out and disappeared, dropped off the face of the earth and you haven't heard anything. The insurance company by statute has 90 days to pay or deny your claim. Now in the infinite wisdom of our legislator, not, uh, not this one sitting here, a former <laughs> but in the infinite wisdom <laughs> of our legislator, I bet he fought this one, it says 90 days to pay or deny. Guess what the last sentence of that statute says? However, the failure to pay or deny within 90 days shall not form the basis of a lawsuit. There's not a lot of teeth in that one, but I can work with it. Anytime they say no, or low, or slow, that's a good case for me to take a look at.